I mean, I think that makes it stealing at that point, doesn't it? If only we had an attorney in the room who could answer some of these questions. If only we, and he must be the guy with the suit on, too. <laughs> which one of these, yeah, which? I guarantee you he can't comment on this case because it's active and he's trying to be a judge. No. You, don't want to, you don't want to be putting that out ahead of time. No. Keep no. him out of that muck, admire there. Our guest in this segment is Ryan White. He is a uh, candidate for the Intermediate Court of Appeals, which was uh, just recently established. The three-judge panel that uh, makes up the Intermediate Court of Appeals was appointed the first go-around, and now this will be the first time these judges are elected on a staggered basis, too. Ryan, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Rob. appreciate it. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Thanks uh, to Jordan Burgess for helping us set this up, too. Ryan, introduce yourself to our audience here in the Eastern Panhandle and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I uh, am from Charleston. I uh, graduated from WU College of Law in 2005. I uh, went to uh, clerk for Judge Goodwin down in the Southern District of West Virginia first, and then I uh, worked for Jackson Kelly in uh, Charleston, well, in Morgantown for one year, and then I went down back down to Charleston for five years. Um, and then I started a law firm with my uh, father uh, called White Law Offices, mm -hmm. and I've been practicing with him since. Um, I also, while I was at Jackson Kelly, um, worked for the West Virginia State Legislature. I worked for the the, uh, the West Virginia Senate Finance and Economic Development Committee. Um, I've been elected to the school board back in 2014, and I was on there for 10 years. I was reelected three times. I served as president uh, for two years. Um, a lot of tough decisions, as you know, especially right. down there in Canal County. We had a flood and. I pushed hard to get the kids back into school during COVID, and and I, I think that uh, my experience uh, through throughout has been uh, very instrumental and will make me be a good judge for the state of West Virginia. Ryan, what kind of law practice did you and your father have? Um, we, uh, we 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 do a lot of everything. We I've, I've gone all over the state. Um, I, I've done some uh, uh, a lot of government finance. Um, uh, some transactionals uh, law where I represent banks. Um, I do I do, do, do a lot of economic development. I do some administrative law, um, and then um, we we also I also did some government relations down in Charleston for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Very good. And and why do you at this point in your life want to be a member of the Intermediate Court of Appeals? Well, I think West Virginia needs a fair and partial judge that will follow the rule of law. Um, I, I, my experience is 18, more than 18 years practice of law and, uh, my, uh, experience as a judicial clerk and, uh, with the West Virginia legislature, I think makes it so that, uh, I, I know how to, to do that and, and make some fair decisions that will benefit everybody in the state. I've been very, um, active in our community. I've uh, been very active with an uh, organization called Generation Charleston, Generation West Virginia, which tries to keep uh, young professionals in in the state of West Virginia because um, we're losing a lot of people that I think should stay here because it's a great state and um, this is one way I want to give back to my community and, and serve serve West Virginia and, and 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 be a part of the solution mr. Miller as Rob mentioned this is a relatively new uh, court system here in the state of West Virginia the Intermediate Court of Appeals um, as it was being discussed and, and established what were your thoughts did did you see it as a need here in the state I did um, when I was a uh, young associate down uh, back in Jackson Kelly uh, one of the Supreme Court justices is running for uh, the court uh, came and, and met with a bunch of the attorneys down there to to try to do stuff that, like I'm doing. I'm going to meet with a bunch of people. Um, but uh, I was one of the I was youngest associate, and I put my hand up, and I said, Mr. Ketchum, uh, would you think uh, intermediate court of appeals is necessary? And so I, even back then, which was back in 2000, probably 13, 14, I was uh, very uh, interested in having a uh, West Virginia intermediate court. And a lot of it is because in West Virginia, we don't have the um, – uh, the Supreme Court didn't have a lot of case law, and um, the intermediate court will be able to, to, to do some a lot more case law, which will give more certainty to the law. And I think that's important because litigants need to know what they're getting into before they take certain actions, and, and also uh, the, it'll allow them to figure out their course of action through litigation as well. Um, 
and, and I also uh, commend the legislature for taking some of the burden off of the circuit courts uh, with the administrative law, the family law, and the um, uh, workers' comp, which uh, the, the, the circuit courts had a lot on their table, and that, that's something that the intermediate court does now. So, so uh, take, take us again to, to kind of the reasoning. Why start maybe with the intermediate uh, court of appeals as opposed to some other judicial position? Well, I was uh, when I'm back in law school. Well, actually, back in college when uh, I, I was taking a constitutional law class, and that's why I decided to go to law school. Um, I was always very interested in the legal arguments and 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 um, the discussion and, and the case law, and I decided at that point I probably wanted to be a judge at some point. And then when I clerked, I clerked for uh, a district judge in uh, Charleston. And I, I got a sense of what the trial court would be like. And while I liked it, I, I, I thought, well, I think I, my talents would be more suited for an appellate type of court because, like I said, I'm very interested in the, um, the legal arguments and deciding the matters of law and not so much getting to the facts of the case, which is what the, the trial court does. Mr. Bodwell. So in your – and you've been practicing, I said, 18 years, I believe you said? Yeah. What uh, what have been the most difficult things that you have found? What have been the things that, from a from a perspective of the law, the inner workings of the law, what have been the things that you think need to be most most need to be clarified? Um, well, I I think that um a lot of the there there's a hesitancy and 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 uh, a lot of our uh, uh, circuit courts to dismiss actions when they should be dismissed. Um, and I think the Intermediate Court of Appeals is doing is 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 uh, clarifying a, a greater standard for that. So, and and a lot of it was because the standard wasn't as clear. And I think that um, what, with what they're doing, I'd like to continue that and um, and 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 clarify that standard and make it so that the courts and the circuit court know when to dismiss cases that that have been brought that maybe aren't really shouldn't be uh, have been brought. Instead of instead of just letting things drag on ad nauseum, exactly. you know, more dismissals, summary judgment, stuff like that, and just plain saying, "Hey, this this case has no merit whatsoever." You're wasting our time. Yeah, I mean, I think I think I I, I don't want to I want to be fair to everybody and and make sure that if you have a case, you have a case, and I'm not encouraging to dismiss cases that that shouldn't be there, but there 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 is a standard that that the intermediate court is. Um, and I've talked to the judges, and they're proud of this. That that they're they're putting forth, and and they're they're pushing for the circuit court, and and they think that this is going to be good for the circuit courts. Now, has it has having the intermediate court, and how many years and how many years has the intermediate court been around? Was uh, it? This is the this will be well when I if I take office it'll be the third year. Okay, um, this is the second year. Right has now. it made? I know there was a backlog in the circuit courts. For a while, I mean, things things were not moving as quickly as they wanted to because they're giving attention to all these matters. Have they seen a a vast improvement in the dockets of the circuit courts and and the expediency that people are able to get justice and that cases are able to get through because of this intermediate court taking some of the pressure off them? Um, in my understanding, is yes. Um, now, different circuit court may say something, but um, according to the judges on the existing intermediate court of appeals, um, they believe so because, like I said, uh, family law used to go to the circuit court, the administrative law used to go to the circuit court, and so did the workers' comp went to the circuit court. So all of that now is appealed directly to the intermediate court. So a lot of those cases were cases, in my understanding. Uh, certain judges didn't like on the circuit court, so they would um, they they would kind of get to them last. So, uh, the, in in those areas, it's 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 gotten a lot better, um, according to the circuit or the intermediate court judges. And um, I would think that um, based off the fact that they've taken all those off their table, that the circuit court now doesn't have as as much case caseload. Yes. And where does the intermediate court? Does it just meet in the uh, state capital, or do they do they travel around to different jurisdictions? Um, I I don't I think they may have traveled one place. Um, 
uh, they have, yes. They've they traveled to, I think, Fairmont State, or they will travel to Fairmont State. They've traveled to one of the, okay. the, the smaller colleges, and, and I think may, maybe Shepard, they're going to plan. Either, either they have or they've, they plan on going to Shepard. Um, they, they pretty much, um, though, meet in, in Canal City in Charleston. That's where they're headquartered. But, yeah, they, they'll do what the Supreme Court does every now and then and, and, and go to um, to different places. Uh, not not that often, though. The, but they, what they do have is they have um, uh, remote uh, – you can argue remotely so there's there's different courtrooms set up in the state where uh, attorney wants to just argue from um i believe there's one in petersburg and um throughout the state there's about six of them where an attorney can argue what out of out of all of the functions of the intermediate court what is the one that you feel is the most important um i i believe uh having a a um a chance to appeal a, a civil case and 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 um a family law case and um a workers comp and get it done quickly I, I think that's what most people want is they they want their decisions done quickly and and that's what the intermediate court has been striving for and and providing that le- level of certainty quickly is is the most important part of the intermediate court in my opinion does the intermediate court meet similar to the Supreme Court where they have specific sessions with some time off in between, or is it kind of a year-round? It's a year-round. Okay. Um, some of the so, some people wanted them to be certain sessions, mm-hmm. um, but uh, the, the three justices, or judges, I'm sorry, the justices are Supreme Court judges mm-hmm. or intermediate court. The three judges wanted to do it all year-round, year and they, have ses- they do have sessions, but th- they don't take off like for three or four months like the, it's what two two or three months the supreme court does. Well, that, downtown we, there yeah that sort of makes sense though because i mean you obviously you, you leave your law practice when you are an intermediate court judge so i mean it's mm-hmm. if it was only a couple times a year to get kind of boring or you <laughs> you know there's a lot of work to do would you, would you like to see the type of cases or the category of cases get expanded that the intermediate court can hear um well, the one thing that the intermediate court does not have at this point in time, but it is uh, allowed by law. The, the law allows for criminal, but they do not get the criminal cases. Um, uh, I would I, look, look, a lot of the most interesting cases, and I saw this when I was uh, a clerk for a district judge, are criminal, uh, especially when they're appealed, right? Because the, the boring criminal stuff gets taken care of with plea deals and, mm-hmm. and, and the district court. Uh, level, but uh, the most interesting ones I believe are, are going to be the criminal ones. So I I would not have a problem with them uh, uh, expanding it for the intermediate court for criminal. Now I think the Supreme Court might view this have similar views. That's why they haven't taken that step yet, or maybe they they just feel like the the bur- their bur- the burden for them on criminal isn't that high, so they want to keep it. Some attorneys express the concern that establishing another layer of a court system in West Virginia would delay justice for those who are working through an already crowded court system to begin with. At that time, did you agree with that or do you disagree with that? Um, at that time, I I uh, was, I thought it was a good idea to have an intermediate court and I, th- I think that um, it, it, it may delay and, and this is what a lot of the judges on the uh, the three judges on the uh, intermediate court believe is is it may delay it a little bit, but um, f- just for civil, right? Um, for the other areas of law, family, um, uh, administrative, and workers' comp, they took it off of the circuit court, so it actually sped it up. Um, but it may delay some of the civil, but um, at, at, at they're trying to figure out what's going to happen with the Supreme Court on their cases. Mm-hmm. So um, if the Supreme Court likes what the intermediate court is doing, then um, it may not because they, they, it may be some sort of uh, review that that's done and, and they just look at the, the decision and say, well, that was a good, a good decision. So they'll, they'll be quick. And, and, um, or if they believe that the intermediate court was wrong, then it may delay it a little bit. But 
they don't think it's going to delay, and I don't think it will delay too much. Uh, How long is a typical trial that goes through an intermediate court now in these first two years? Any idea? Um, I've heard uh, the uh, they they try to get it um, done within two or three months. Is three and they have some pride in doing that, and and I I, I want to keep that pace up. Um, now certain certain cases I've I have heard certain cases. Uh, may not be as quick, but mm-hmm. I think their their goal is to be about two or three months, three four months. Do the justices have the option of plucking a case from the intermediate court of appeals and review it and bypassing the intermediate court? Yes, they do. I don't know that they've done that yet, but they have that ability. Yes, um, I think maybe they did it once. May if, if they've done it, I think they've done it maybe once. Yeah. It, it's not very often. That's not a do, common place. Do we know any data yet as to how many cases from the immediate, uh, that were decided in the intermediate court got appealed and then were heard by the Supreme Court? It's been the, the ones that have been appealed um, and, and heard by the Supreme Court is uh, I think it's maybe like three or four so far. Um, that they're, they're still some that are, um, I can't remember the exact number. I, I was given the number, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's like 40, 30 or 40 that have been appealed, and maybe two or three have been decided so far. Are there any cases the intermediate court decides that are not eligible to be appealed to the Supreme Court? Um, I, I cannot say that there are, but I could be wrong. I my understanding is everything is is appealable to the Supreme Court, um, but don't hold me on that. I, there, there might be something that I'm not thinking. I, I wouldn't know if you gave me the wrong answer anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, on the on the few that you said have already been decided, have any of them overturned the decision of the intermediate court? Did the Supreme Court find the uh, the intermediate court to act in error? I don't believe so yet. Okay. But I could be wrong on that. Because I mean, so base, I mean, the, the intermediate court is basically a contemplative body. Yes. I mean, you are just you're looking at, you're not like you said, you're not looking at the facts. You're looking at the rule of law to make sure everything was done correctly. Exactly. That really does sound fascinating. Yeah, yeah. You're looking for what's called error, and 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 that's what an attorney does in, in the trial court. If there's an error in the way it was, if they felt the litigant thinks there was done, then you appeal to the intermediate court or the Supreme Court um, and say there's error. And, and it, like you said, it's just you're looking at the law. You're not looking at the fact. The facts are decided at the trial court level. So. so let's go back to the very beginning of our conversation. 18 years of experience in law, uh, working even with the legislature, uh, a decade of experience on the school board in our largest county in uh, in the state of West Virginia, and, and even residing as a president over that board. How do all of those experiences make you the best candidate for this position? Well, I think overall those experiences have uh, given me the ability to be a, uh, a, a good decision maker and someone that's going to listen to people. And that's, I think, one of the uh, best traits a, ju- a judge can have is listen to people, listen to their arguments and give them a fair shake. Um, I mean, when I was in the school board, I pushed heavily for uh, increased security for um, our, our students. And that's one thing I did was was listen to all the people because there were a lot of concerns about that. And we, we ended up putting money towards security in, 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 our, uh, in our schools. And I think that's an example of the types of decisions that I will make on the on this on the uh, intermediate court of appeals great ryan we've got about a minute left take that minute address our potential voters out there and tell them why they should vote for you um i, I like i said before i uh am going to be a fair impartial judge that uh, will follow the rule of law i think it's important to have someone that you you trust that will listen to the litigants and and make sure that there is uh no, that doesn't take their own opinion and, and put it into their case that 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 follows the law um, I, 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 do, I, I have never been a fan of judicial activism and um, I will not be a judicial activist judge I will do do what the law says and um, work to uh, uh, be within the Constitution of our state and the United States Ryan where do people find out more about you and your campaign for the intermediate court um, uh, I have a uh, 
a website. I'm sorry, I'm going to, I don't want to give out the wrong. No, you do what you got to do. Ryan White 4WV.com. And is that the number four or F O R? F O R. Ryan White F O R WV.com. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Rob.